Hello guys and welcome back to my 3D platformer tutorial series in Unreal Engine 5. In this part we are going to be taking a look at how to create a life system similar to the one in Crash and Mario. So you have this amount of lives, you respawn at checkpoints if you have lives and you respawn at the player start if you have zero lives. And we are going to carry over the lives number between deaths so it will not reset when the character dies. It's gonna work with our checkpoint system that we've built in the previous video so if you want to check that out please go ahead and do. If you want full access to the entire series plus the project files on Patreon then please check out the Patreon it's gonna be in the description and one last thing if you want to support my endeavors in game development then you can check the first link in the description which is gonna be a link to my game Steam page the game is called in the workplace of madness and it is a survival horror game that looks kind of unique so if you guys want to see that game and play it in the future buy it play it all of that stuff check the link in the description so yeah let us go and get started with the tutorial right now first of all we want to create a value inside of the player character which will hold the lives that the player has so go to bp third person character and create an integer variable and we are going to be calling this integer lives so we do not need more than one for this it's not like the health system so just change it to integer and compile now at the event begin play we are going to be selecting everything and just pushing it up and the event begin play we are going to be adding something called a sequence i think i explained this in this series before so a sequence just does the does a several things in a correct order so one then two so we just want to print out the number of lives that we have so just drag out of in string and type append then this append um, just uh, type in the a current lives and in the b connect the lives variable in there so that you can tell how many lives you have when you start the game and we are going to be doing this more than once so just add a delay and it can be like as many seconds as you want i'm just adding two seconds and once it completes it will print string again and this is going to be like endless but it's better than doing it in the event tick <laughs> i always do this because you know i want to add delays for um before i show it but anyway just straighten everything and change the lives number to three most platformers start with three lives so compile Anyway, we want to go to the props and we are going to be creating a live material for the coin. We just don't want to import another mesh right now. So yeah, we are just going to duplicate the coin material, the shiny coin material. And uh, we want to make it sort of green. What we can do now is add a constant three vector. And this constant three vector is going to be green and connect it to the multiply instead of the normal constant value and hit apply and you can see that the material is now green so i'm just gonna rename it to m and uh, m lives and you should just rename everything when you are working on games my projects are very unorganized and i've been trying to work on that and now we want to create a new blueprint class and the class is going to be a normal actor call it bp underscore life just add a static mesh which is going to be the coin that we've imported in the first part so just choose the static mesh type coin and there it is now this coin we are going to be changing the material to be m lives which is the green one and for the scale yeah 20 is good so i also rotated this mesh because it was very very um like it was upside down so you can see that it is perfect in game now and we want to go to the event graph and start coding the stuff what we want to do is we want to add a sphere collision and this sphere collision is going to be what the player touches to collect the lives so rename it to collision and with it selected right click add event collision add on components begin overlap so i explained this before it just does it when you touch the collision so it just does this set amount of things so get instigator yeah you should choose this one and not this one cast to third person character or whatever your player character actor is called and now we are gonna just get the lives 
and we want to add one to the lives value so we are also going to set lives and then add like type the plus button and add one life or what you can do is you can use the increment int node but uh, you know in case you want to add more than one you can just do it like this and not with the increment and then you destroy the actor and believe it or not it should actually work now but we will face a few other issues as we go so you can see that if you touch it it will increase the current lives and it will destroy the actor which is exactly what you need from a platformer so like for example if you duplicate you can just take all of them and you can see that your lives will increase with each one that you you take and that is exactly what we need and it is perfect however we want to change a few things and first of all I think we need to make it rotate so I went to the collectible coins and you just need to copy all of this and paste it inside of the BP life I already explained this all in the first video of the series so in case you missed that go check it out and follow this one next because you can just redo all of this if you don't want to understand it but if you want to understand it just go to the first part so connect them to the event begin play and the event tick and what this will do is it will rotate the coin so that it can like look more alive in the game and also the rotation speed you want to promote that to a variable and um, change the value to one the mesh you just want to replace it with the new mesh because the reference was referencing the old one and now if you hit play you can see that these coins are going to be rotating which is exactly what we need so now that we have added to the lives when the player touches the actor what we want to do is we want to take away lives when the player dies so we want to decrease the lives number by one and we want to make sure that it does not reset when the player respawns so you want to go to the third person character's um, death system check for death and you want to set lives and get lives and just hit the minus button to get the subtract or what you can do is you can use the decrement in integer uh, node in case you want to decrease only one life specifically I'm gonna just do this one and choose one life just in case you guys want to customize it the guys who have the project files just connect it before the you are dead or after the you have died print string and I think it should just work like this it's just this simple when it comes to taking away lives so you can just organize it and then go back to your game and give it a test and you will see that it's gonna reset when the player dies like after the player respawns so here we have it taken lives and we currently have four now if we wait for the character to die you can see you have died and the current lives have decreased but when you respawn it's just uh, not gonna be okay so what you want to do is you want to do a do once node first because there is this issue where it takes away more than one life depending on if you have like a lot of spikes or dangers you want to make sure that it only happens once so if you die now it will decrease only one life rather than a few and that is perfect but you can see the reset over here it resets the number as soon as you respawn because the variables always reset when you respawn or when you open a brand new level so over here in the set life we are gonna get game instance and we are gonna cast to the game instance that we have made in the previous video so this game instance we do like i did show you how to carry over the respawn variables create a brand new variable inside of the game instance and it's going to be lives and it's an integer now after the casting you want to set the lives to be the number of lives that the player has and this will what this will do is it will just save it to the game instance and you want to get lives from the casting you know after or before the checkpoint and then set the player's lives and what this will do is it will um, get the number from the game instance and put it on the player character so I think this is gonna be perfect now
and I'm gonna just rename the comment, respawn at checkpoints and get life's amount from game instance. And one more thing inside of the game instance, you wanna change the default lives to three because that's what like it happens whether you have checkpoints or not so the default number should be the same as the default number inside of the player character all of this checkpoint stuff you can just move it away because what we want to do now is we want to make sure that if our lives are zero we want to respawn at the player start and not at the checkpoint so just create a brand new branch and for the condition you want to get the player's lives and you want to make sure that it is less than or equal to zero so if it's less than or equal to zero the false is going to be the respawn at checkpoint so that's not true and you want to respawn at checkpoint but if it's true what we are going to do is we are going to drag out of the game instance set checkpoint on to be false so we want to delete our checkpoint that we have and we are going to be setting the lives to be the default number or you can just set them to zero if you want that to be your default number and set the lives also inside of the player character i did forget to pay, make it the default number and i just added zero over here uh, it was my fault so just ignore that and you can just add whatever default number that you have so now if you give the game a test go to the checkpoint and try dying you will see that um, you will respawn at the checkpoint and your lives have decreased and they did not reset and if you keep dying until you reach zero lives then you will respawn at the level start so you can see, see that i'm just going through the motions over here and testing it and now that we have zero lives you can see that i respawned at the level start so now it is a perfect system and is exactly what we need though we do have one problem and it's that the lives actually respawn when you die so we want to make sure that they eventually do not respawn when the player dies unless they reset like they go to the level select menu and then open the level again then that will respawn the lives but during checkpoints and all of that i don't think lives should be respawnable so we are going to be fixing that when we work on the save system rather than this video over here because it's going to be a little bit more complicated so so guys this is it for the tutorial i really hope you guys enjoyed it and that it was useful if it was do not hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe if you are new to the channel and if you are not new and you already like the video then go to the first link check out my games steam page and wishlist and also check out my patreon if you want to see more awesome content and the entire full series with the project files so guys thank you for watching take care have a great day and bye